it's Hilary and as promised, I'm back with a video where I spill all my comprehensive and step-by-step advice on how you can make a winning Breakthrough Junior Challenge entry. So if you want to know the three key elements in a winning video, as well as the six-step process in order to achieve that, then keep watching. I'll also be sharing some pointers and resources I curated just for you. I actually have two years of experience in this competition, so I think I can give you some valuable insight. And if you haven't yet, I suggest you watch my previous video where I share all my experiences as a winner and some reasons for you to join the challenge. That is, if you're still undecided. So let's get into the video. After all the days I spent semi-obsessively watching the previous challenge videos, I think I finally figured it out. The three key elements for a winning video, which are the clear subject and idea, creative expression, and compelling delivery. So how do you get the clear subject and idea? You need to have three things, a sufficiently complex but still interesting topic, a definite focus and scope within that topic, and two to four key ideas which you develop clearly and coherently in your video. What are you really talking about? Next is creative expression. This is all about your scripts, your illustrations, and your demos. How can you make the viewer understand what you're talking about? Now the next thing I'm gonna say is super important, so take note. Your video should have an aha moment. Basically, it's that one second where the viewer feels like he gets it, where it all starts making sense. You'll see what I mean if you watch the previous finalists and winners' videos. Don't get too caught up in making pretty animations or all those fancy effects because your aha moments and your demos are much, much more important than that. Lastly, how do you get compelling delivery? It's all about your presentation skills, your production quality, and your supporting elements. So how can you keep the viewer engaged all throughout your video? A nice metric for this is YouTube's audience retention curve. For any given video, it almost always drops down towards the end, but your goal is to keep it as close to 100% as much as possible. So here I'm going to show you my audience retention curves for both of my entries in two years, and you can see you can study how I improved and where it tends to drop off and rise and start to speculate why. So now let's start getting into the six step process. Here the size of the circle represents the relative importance of that step. I'd like to emphasize here that steps two and four are the most crucial. There's a lot to unpack in the six step process, so I'll only tackle the first three in this video. The next three will be for another video which I'll upload in a few days, so stay tuned for that. Before you actually proceed to step one, you need to do step zero first, which are some high level things you should know about the competition. So first, you need to read everything on the website. Read the FAQs, the terms and conditions, the deadlines, and the licensing rules, and most importantly, the judging criteria. It's unbelievable how many people don't do this, but it's an absolute must. Another point is that you need to write, direct, produce, and script the entire video all by yourself and that the challenge is about explaining an existing idea or theory in science in an original way, so it's not necessarily your own scientific research. Next is you have to understand what the challenge is all about. So it's about using your creativity and your scientific knowledge to see the universe in your own beautiful way and transmitting that into a video that excites everyone even those without a scientific background. Before you jump in, you must watch well-made videos by past finalists and popular channels. This gives you some kind of quality standard. Model your video after them. Just for you, I made a playlist including all the videos and channels that I used when I was making my entry and some new ones that I found since then. Now, an even better resource than that are the actual challenge videos from the top 30 up to the top 15. So what you can do is you can watch the semi-finalist videos and then proceed to the finalist ones. Not only are they good benchmarks, they also show you the judging process at work. You could see what videos go through, what videos don't, and what quality is expected, and so on. So if you're super serious about winning, then your video should be of equal or greater quality. Now your video should talk about something in physics, life sciences, or math. You can even talk about something in CS as long as you give it a more mathy take. 
But within those, you can pick anything in the universe, which makes this stuff really, really, really hard. Now, for me, this is one of the most difficult segments of the competition, but I was guided by three criteria based on which I judged the merits of my shortlisted topics. My topic or idea should be big. It should be a revolutionary or an all-encompassing concept. Next, it should be complex enough to need an explanation, but not too complex that it loses the viewer's interest. And lastly, I should be able to do my own creative take on it or make some cool illustrations or demos with it. Now, what are demos? So for me, these are the foundations of a winning entry. I'll talk about them more in the next video, but some samples are here. They looked at it from different reference frames. Push up in front and looser at the back. A medium pitch sound or a low pitch sound. What if we had infinitely many observers? So when I start moving, I see it travel in vertical lines. 96.8% the speed of light and took 10 seconds to finish a race. The amplitude, its weight is greater. Then you sum all of these up. Illustrate this with my device right here. We have two waves. Huh? Imagine that you have a pair of smelly shoes, and because of their terrible odor, you put them in two separate but identical boxes. You then mix them up, until you are unable to distinguish which box contains which pair. What if the driver decides to change the speed of the car drastically by stopping all of a sudden? Except I give each one a different RNA strand to look for, which means they look for different text fragments. However, what if you put the bowling ball inside a box that fits it exactly? That should allow you to always know where it is. But in quantum physics, that cannot happen. Of course, cold water is much closer to temperature zero, but the hot water starts blazing heat first. But each time we have a late night meal, unexpected food messes up the liver's rhythm. Basically, these demos should lead your viewer into an aha moment. So how do you choose a topic? Start with what you already know. If you're blank, then Google something like most important science ideas or unanswered questions in science. And then go Wikipedia surfing from there. Watch related YouTube videos and dive deeper until you arrive at a single topic that excites you and has great potential. Once you've picked a topic, clearly define a scope within that and focus on that only because you only have three minutes. For instance, you can't just pick quantum physics because it's so broad. Instead, pick a more specific idea or phenomenon within that and then tie it back to the core tenets of quantum physics. So there are so many possible topics to choose from. So some useful tips for this step, try to avoid speculative topics. Even scientists are divided about these issues, so try to avoid them. Instead, go for ideas that have been firmly established in science and those that have been tested with experiments for years. When I was making my entry, I was guided by this Einstein quote. If you can't explain it simply, then you don't understand it well enough. If I was going to explain something simply, the essence of this whole competition basically, then I had to exhaust all the resources I could. So I used uh, videos, popular books, online courses, even journal articles just to know, just to understand my topic and know how to best present it. So for you, take note of two to four key ideas on your topic. Look for and think of ways to spice up those key ideas using humor, uh, footage, animations, and most importantly, demos. Avoid the common misconceptions of your topic, consult someone who knows more, and keep a list of your references because they'll ask for it once you're in the semifinals. Now for this step, I recommend proceeding in some order. Start with YouTube videos related to your topic and then go further by reading articles, news, and credible blog posts. For more depth, read popular science books if you have the time. Now if you really want more understanding, then go for college level lecture videos and textbooks. If you really want to go there, if you really want to go extreme, then go find journal articles using Google or Wikipedia citations. Going through research in this order ensures that you're building a strong understanding from the ground up. Another thing, accuracy is extremely important because duh, it's science. Remember that the judges are people at the top of their fields, so they'll know if you've done something wrong, which can be anything from a rookie typo to an outright false claim. That brings me to the end of steps 0, 1, and 2. But throughout the entire process, I always did one thing. 
I always thought about the viewer. What would the viewer think if I said this, if I did this, or if I showed this? And note that your video will go through three stages of judging, from the peer review, the evaluation panel, to the selection committee. These are very different sets of people, and your video has to appeal to all of them. This is all speculation, but I think that the peer review selects for the videos with the best engagement and elimination. The judges are participants like you, so unless they have extensive knowledge about your topic, unlikely, then they'll judge your video more harshly on its visual elements, its production quality, and your ability to explain well. So to get through the cut from the thousands to the top 75, do well on your production, post-production, script, and your demos. Now on the other end of judging, you have the selection committee, composed of the all-stars in science. Chances are these people have spent more time on their respective fields than you have existing on this earth. So they've seen it all. They've seen all the ways their science can be presented, taught, and explained, and all the ways their science can be misrepresented. So I predict that they will be more particular about your accuracy, your originality, and your creativity. Now, one last thing. I notice that people keep asking me about what software I use. So I'm answering it once and for all. I use Premiere Pro and After Effects. But there is definitely more to a good video than its graphics and animations alone. And I'll talk more on that on my next video. That's it for this video. For the next one, I'll be talking about scripts, demos, filming, editing, animations, and resources you can use. So hit that subscribe and bell button if you want to know when it's out. And if you have any questions, uh, please leave a comment below and I'll try my best to answer. You can also find me on social media. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Good luck in the challenge.